Hey, welcome to Body Talk. Today we are diving deep into blood pressure, what it is, how your circulatory system works, why pressure goes up or down, and most importantly, how to measure it manually using a stethoscope and cuff. This video is for anyone curious about their body. If that sounds like you, don't forget to subscribe, give the video a thumb up and let's get started. So what is blood pressure exactly? It's the pressure of circulating blood against the walls of blood vessels. It's highest when the heart beats and it's lowest when the heart rests between beats. But what do those numbers actually mean? Systolic, the force when your heart contracts. Diastolic, the force when your heart is at rest. If it's too low, it means your organs might not get enough blood. And when it's too high, it means your blood vessels and heart are under pressure. Let's take a closer look at the system behind it all. This circulatory system. Main component, heart, arterias, capillaries, venous. Heart, a pump that keep everything moving. Arterias, carry oxygenated blood away from the heart. Capillaries, tiny vessels where change happens. Veins, bring the oxygenated blood back to the heart. Imagine it like a closed loop plumbing system. If the pipes are narrowed or blocked, pressure rises. If the pump weakens, pressure drops. Blood starts in the left ventricle flows to the aorta through arterias capillaries then back through venous to the right atrium then to lungs and start over what causes high or low blood pressure let's break it down high blood pressure causes stress and anxiety smoking high salt diet lack of physical activity kidney disease hormonal disorders like thyroid issues medications like steroids or family history low blood pressure causes dehydration blood loose trauma or internal bleeding heart failure infections medications like beta blockers many people don't even know they have high blood pressure it's often symptomless for years that's why regular checks are so important. Let's talk about how it feels when your blood pressure isn't where it should be. Because whether it's too high or too low, your body gives you signals if you know how to read them. High blood pressure is defined as stage 1, 113 to 139 systolic or 80 to 89 diastolic. Stage 2, 140 systolic or 19 diastolic crisis 180 systolic or 120 diastolic why is it dangerous high blood pressure makes the heart work harder to pump blood over time this can damage arterias the brain kidneys and even your eyes come on symptoms especially in stage 2 or crisis headaches usually in the back of the head or temples, especially in the morning, blurred or double vision, due to increased pressure on the blood vessels of the eyes, nosebleeds, rare but can happen during a blood pressure spike, chest pain or tightness, warning sign of heart strain or angina, palpitations, fast irregular heartbeat due to cardiac overload, dizziness or confusion, especially in the older adults, shortness of breath if the heart is struggling most people with high blood pressure feel nothing at all that's why it's called the silent killer hypertensive crisis red flags severe chest pain difficulty speaking or understanding speech numbness in face arm or leg especially one-sided sudden vision loose confusion or unconsciousness this could signal stroke heart attack, aortic disease. Get emergency medical help immediately. Low blood pressure is usually defined as below 19 to 60 mmGH. But again, it's not just about the numbers, it's about the symptoms. What causes low blood pressure? Dehydration from vomiting, diarrhea or not drinking enough. Blood loose, trauma, surgery or internal bleeding. Heart failure when the heart isn't pumping effectively. Sepsis, 
body-wide infection causing vasodilatation and drop in pressure. Medications includes diuretics, beta blockers, and antidepressants. Endocrine problems, adrenal insufficiency or low thyroid. Common symptoms, dizziness, especially when standing up, fainting, brain isn't getting enough oxygen, fatigue, low circulations means low energy. Cold, pale or clammy skin, blood is shunted away from the skin. Rapid shallow breathing, a compensatory response, nausea, blurred vision, tingling in the fingers or toes. When is blood pressure emergency? If it's happened suddenly after trauma or surgery, if there is confusion, chest pain or bluish lips. If the person is unresponsive or hard to wake up, if blood pressure stays low, even after drinking water or laying down. In such cases, you may be dealing with shock, life-threatening emergency. If a patient says, I've been dizzy lately, especially when I get up from bed, you should always check their blood pressure sitting and standing. They may have orthostatic hypertension. Blood pressure emergencies can be life-threatening. They may look like just a headache or feeling tired, but they can actually be sign of heart attack, organ failure, circulatory collapse. So let's talk about the two major emergencies. A hypertensive crisis happens when the blood pressure suddenly rises to dangerously high levels usually. It can damage organs like the brain, heart, kidneys and eye within minutes to hours. There is two types. Hypertensive urgency. Blood pressure is very high but no sign of organ damage yet. Patients may have severe headache, anxiety, nosebleeds, mild shortness of breath. It's serious but not immediately life-threatening. Needs medication adjustment and follow-up within 24 to 48 hours. Hypertensive emergency. A very high blood pressure plus sign of acute organs damage. This is a medical emergency. Symptoms of hypertensive emergency. Severe chest pain, possible myocardial interaction, shortness of breath, confusion or altered mental state, loss of vision, sudden weaknesses or numbness, especially one-sided, difficulty speaking or understanding speech, bloody urine, it maybe means kidney damage. What's happening in the body? Think of blood vessels like hoses. When pressure gets too high, the heart struggles to pump against the resistance. The brain can swell or bleed. Kidneys can shut down due to vascular damage. What to do? Stay calm. Don't let the person panic. Sit them down. Keep them still and supported. Loosen any tight closing. Do not give any over-the-counter drugs unless prescribed, especially not caffeine or stimulants. If they take blood pressure meds, ask when their last dose was, but never give any extra dose without doctor's instruction. Call emergency medical services immediately. Monitor symptoms while waiting. Check consciousness, breathing, ability to speak. Low blood pressure becomes a medical emergency when it leads to shock, meaning the brain and the vital organs are not getting enough oxygen. It can happen due to severe dehydration, massive blood loss, septic shock, infection spread through the body, heart failure, anaphylaxis, severe allergic reaction, certain medication, overdose or interaction without oxygen, the brain shut down, confusion and unconsciousness. The heart weakness, it means low pulse. The kidneys stop filtering, it means no urine. Cells die and in the end, organ failure. What to do? Lay the person flat on their back. Keep them warm, cover with a blanket or a jacket. Do not give anything by mouth if they are unconsciousness. If due to trauma, apply direct pressure to bleeding site. Call emergency services immediately. Monitor breathing and pulse. If needed, begin CRP. Elevate their legs above the heart level if no trauma suspected. Manual blood pressure measurement. 
So why use the manual method when we have digital device? The manual blood pressure is more accurate, especially in surgical care. Doesn't rely on batteries. Give you control over speed and technique. Helps in low resource getting or during clinical exam. You will need a sigmomanometer, a quiet environment, and a stethoscope. Now, let me walk you through it step by step. For the preparation, have the person rest for 5 minutes, sit them down with their arms supported at heart level, make sure the cuff size fits, too tight or too loose gives wrong reading, remove clothing over the arm if needed. Let's get into it step by step. Step 1. Wrap the cuff snugly around the upper arm, 2 to 3 cm above the elbow crease. Step 2. Find the brachial artery, feel for a pulse on the inner elbow. Step 3. Place the stethoscope over the spot, not under the cuff. Step 4. Close the valve and inflate the cuff. Go up to about 160 to 180 mmHg or see above the last known systolic pressure. Step 5. Slowly deflate the cuff about 2 mmHg per second. Step 6. Listen carefully. The first sound you hear is systolic pressure and the last sound before the silence is diastolic pressure. For example, for example, first sound at 126 and the last sound at 78 and that's 126 to 78 mmHg. Step 7. Fully deflate and remove the cough. Always repeat the reading after one or two minutes for accuracy. Here are some common mistakes. Cough too loose or too tight, measuring over closes, arm not at hard level, talking during the reading, releasing pressure too quickly. And here are some tips. Always use the left arm unless there's a reason not to. Try to measure at the same time daily. For the children or obese patients, use the correct cuff size. Don't take blood pressure right after exercise or caffeine. In manual measurement, we use brachial arteries. The other arteries includes carotid for emergencies, radial at rest, good for pulse, not blood pressure. Popliteal, behind the knee, sometimes used, but for the routine blood pressure, always go with the brachial. Okay, and now you know how the circulatory system works, what causes blood pressure problems, how to take someone's blood pressure manually step by step. If you learned something new, please like, subscribe and drop a comment below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.